What's up everyone, today we're gonna cover Windows processes, what a process is, how process is created and how you can explore process internals on your own. Let's get right into it. Let's start with a simple definition. When you run an application on Windows, it will create a process for this app. So basically a process is an instance of a running application. You can imagine it like a container and inside is everything that application needs. Each process has memory. And actually, it thinks it has all the memory available on the system just for itself. It also thinks that it is the only one running on the system. And all that because of a concept called virtual memory. Uh, but this is a topic for a separate video and I'm gonna make a video about uh, memory in Windows in general. So subscribe if you don't wanna miss it. A process can spawn another process under itself. These are called child processes. For example, Chrome spawns a child process for each tab you open. Processes also have their priority, which determines an order in which operating system schedules them for execution. It also means that if you give a very high priority to a resource intensive task, it might break other stuff that actually needs it. For example, if you set real-time priority to a game, your mouse will start lagging or something like this. Task Manager divides processes into three categories – App, Windows Processes and Background Processes. To put it simply, a process will be categorized as App if it has a visible window, if it is marked as Critical it will be a Windows process and everything else will be categorized as a Background process. But I really want to focus on process internals in this video, so let's talk about that. There are many ways for Windows to create a process. The most popular is probably by using create process function. And this function creates a process with the same token as the user who called it. Token is just a security identifier that defines the privileges and access rights for a user. A process can also be created as a user, which basically means with privileges and access rights of another user. To do that, you need to call create process as user function. By the way, if you want to see a detailed description of each argument of those functions, check out Microsoft documentation, link in description. As you can see, there are more functions, but what's interesting is that create process, for example, when called, calls another function, create process internal, and it calls yet another function, anti create user process, which resides in NTDLL. It performs a switch from user mode to kernel mode and actually creates a process. And this concept of sort of layers is present all around Windows API, as it's very convenient and secure. For those who don't remember, user mode is where application runs with limited privileges, ring free, and kernel mode is where the operating system kernel runs with full privileges, ring zero. So as an experiment, let's create a process. Let's use create process function to create a process. First, we need to declare two structures, startup info si, startup info si, and process information uh, pi. Then we use uh, zero memory uh, function because we need to zero memory size of si and uh, the same for PI. That's just uh, coding stuff. You don't really need to need to know what it is for if you just want to understand processes, but uh, this is like what you need to do. And then you want to set a CB member to size of CB like this. And now we are ready to, uh, now we are ready to to call the function. So create process A like this. First parameter null, second parameter uh, there should be a path to the executable we want to run. So let's do let's do calculator for example system32 uh, calc.exe I think I specified the path correctly. Now we want to specify null null false uh, false zero null again and uh, one more null and now the address of si and the address of pi so with uh, with this uh, with this function we are basically specifying these parameters again if you uh, want to know them more in details, I have a separate video about Windows API, so you can check it out, it's somewhere there above me. 
And uh, if you just want to know about this exact function and its parameters, uh, of course, Microsoft documentation is where you should refer. So when you run this program, uh, a calculator will open and we have, if you open up Process Hacker, a very handy tool, you can search for calc.exe. Uh, calc, wait, it should be calculator app. Yeah, calculator app.exe and we have calculator, uh, calculator process running. So uh, this is how it works. We have a running process, so let's dig into it and see what we can find. A very good tool for debugging and analyzing process is WinDebug. You can download it, for example, from Microsoft Store. Once you have WinDebug, just open it, click on File, Attach to Process, and uh, look for the calculator process that we just created, calculator app.exe, this one, and click Attach. Each Windows process is represented by an e-process structure. It contains essential attributes related to a process and pointers to many important data structures. For example, process environment block, which we're gonna take a deeper look at later in this video. Now what's cool is that you can actually read e-process inside WinDebug. Uh, type dt nt exclamation mark underscore e-process and enter. And as you can see, we have all the members of e-process structure listed here. Let's now focus on the first member of eProcess, which is PCB, or Process Control Block. It's a structure of type KProcess, which is a kernel-level structure that holds information necessary for the OS to manage the execution of a process. It is needed to track state, scheduling, and resource usage of each process within the system. Well, as you might have guessed, we can read it as well. Scroll down here and type dt nt exclamation mark underscore k process. Press enter and here it is. It's a little uh, smaller, but still has a bunch of, uh, bunch of members to explore. So to summarize, k process is used by Windows kernel to manage the execution of a process at the kernel level and eProcess extends it with additional information necessary for overall management of a process. But both eProcess and kProcess are accessible only from kernel mode. They contain sensitive information and controls that must be protected. Accessing them requires kernel privilege. However, the PEB structure that I mentioned before is accessible from user mode. PEB is a member of eProcess, but it resides in user mode address space, which means that its members can be easily accessed by any system components that needs them. This design avoids the overhead of system calls, which makes our system more efficient. Microsoft documentation doesn't tell us a lot about PEB's members, but thanks to WinDebug again, we can read them ourselves. So now what you want to do is scroll down, dt nt dll exclamation mark underscore peb press enter and now you have the members of process environment block structure but we can go even further type r dollar sign peb and now repeat the this command and uh, type something like this and now you have the peb with values of, uh, of each parameter, of each member. Now, there are some members of PEB that I wanna talk about. So let's start with PEB LDR data. This is a structure that contains information about loaded modules uh, sorted in three ways. And basically th what it means is that if your executable is loading any DLLs, any dynamic link libraries, they will be present there. Then we have RTL user process parameter structure, which contains process parameter information. For example, if you run a program like this, information about argument 1 and argument 2 would be in this structure. There is also image path name, which holds a path to the executable image. Now, once again, Microsoft documentation doesn't provide us uh, with full description, so the screenshot you saw before is actually from Nearsoft which is a very good resource for anything that the official documentation doesn't contain. So the uh, link is in the description, of course, you are welcome to check it out. So the next member I want to talk about is being debugged. This is the flag that indicates if the debugger, if a debugger is attached to a process. Right now we are debugging uh, calculator app with WinDebug, so of course this flag is 1. 
uh, but if we close uh, WinDebug and go to this little program I made, it's called PEB Parser, and it basically allows you to uh, read the PEB uh, structure in C and um, I mean, and use these members, right? I can, for example, print it. Let me change it to being debugged uh, like this. By the way, this code is uh, available on my GitHub, link in the description. You are welcome to modify it and use it and do whatever you want. But uh, basically, uh, when we, we need to uh, create the calculator process again, because it uh, was closed, all right. Now it is, it is on again run the parser, it asks you for a name of the process, which is called calculatorapp.exe. And as you can see, being debugged is now zero. So uh, this is very cool that you can actually see those uh, values change. And the last member that I want to talk about is image base address. Uh, let me use this code one more time and let's modify it uh, to print image base address. Uh, we can run it again, calculator app .exe, and this, this is the address where in memory the executable for calculator is located. Alright, so this is actually very cool and very useful for all of you who uh, like hacking stuff, because uh, the image base address is used in a lot of hacking techniques, actually. For example, there, there is this one called process hollowing, and it basically uh, is all about switching this address to an address of uh, your malicious executable, and then you can execute a malware under a calculator process. So it hides as a calculator, but it actually is a malware rather than calculator running. So if you want me to do a video uh, about it, write it down in the comments. And that's all I prepared for this video. So if you liked it, hit the thumbs up button, hit subscribe, and as always, see you soon.